I have a new UDF for you. This is a count string. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to find a string within another string and we're going to count how many times it occurs. This is actually pretty useful for a lot of different functions you might have to do, especially when it comes to string manipulation. So I'll show you how we do it. And first I'm going to show you how we do it in Excel. So this is kind of the why this is sort of difficult currently. So right now I'm going to use this to count the number of pipes that exist within this string. So I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to go equals. I'm going to take the length of the string. I'm going to subtract the length of the substituted value for the pipe. So my text is B3. My old text would be a pipe symbol. And then my new text would be a blank and then no instance number. And it gives me six. Obviously you can see that that's kind of a painful way to do it, so I'm actually just gonna do it another way. I called it count string, and I'm gonna hit Control shift a to get the full thing. My full string is this cell, and my partial string is this pipe symbol right here. And there you go, so it takes two arguments and it spits out the number of times one string occurs within another string. So I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the section below. So in order to get to your Visual Basic IDE, hit Alt F11 and it'll bring up this window. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out which arguments we're gonna accept and also the return type. As you can see, we're returning a number, so our return type is gonna be an integer, and we're accepting two arguments. The first being the string, the full string and the second being the partial string. So I'm going to just write function count string. My first argument is the full string, while my second argument would be the partial string. I didn't put a return value yet. VBA has implicit typing, so you don't always have to use a return value, but it's actually a good practice to strongly type these things. By strongly type, I mean write declare each. Uh, each variable. So I'm going to declare count string as an integer. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually create a counter. So a counter is used very often within loops, and we're going to be using a for loop in this video. So I'm just going to write dim cnt as integer. I'm going to set my cnt variable to zero, and I'm going to start my for loop. So I'm just going to say for i. i is a very common variable used with for statements. So I'm going to go for i equals one to the length of my full string variable, which is the cell in which we're looking through. So I'm going to say, hey, go from the first character of this of the cell to the last character. And then I'm just going to put my, my end statement for the four. Okay, so once I'm done with that, I can start coding in what I want it to do each time it goes through every character. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to go if the mid, and my string's going to be the full string, my start number is going to be i, and my length is going to be the length of the partial string. So I'm going to say if that section of the full string is equal to my partial string, then cnt equals cnt plus 1. So what that does is it's going to increment count every time the loop passes it. And then uh, otherwise I'm just going to end if. And that is pretty much it for the most part. Um, once I'm done with that and it exits the loop, I need to return the value. So I can say count string is equal to cnt. And that should work. So pretty basic function. So if I, I'm just going to delete this and it should return up number six, count string. What's the string? It's here. And then what's the partial string? Right there. Boom, six. So uh, I can even do things for like spaces as well if I wanted to count the number of spaces, which is also kind of a way of counting words. Pretty much anything I want. If I wanted to count a, a specific string, like R, it should return 1. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions. You can uh, leave a comment below, and I'll do my best to answer it. Thanks again.